relationship with the Holy Spirit. I believe the greatest relationship that you can have on earth after knowing Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior is relationship with the Holy Spirit. In this course you're going to learn on how to have that relationship and how to fellowship on the conviction of the Holy Spirit and on how He wants to have a relationship with you on the fruit of the Holy Spirit. I believe that this course is going to bring a huge change in your walk with Christ. Lesson 1. Relationship of the Holy Spirit. Before we talk about having relationship with the Holy Spirit, we need to learn about Holy Spirit's relationship with us. The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John chapter 1 verse 29. And if we go a few verses down it says the following, And John bore witness saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and He remained on Him. I did not know Him, but He who sent me to baptize with water said, Upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on Him, this is He who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. John chapter 1 verse 32 and verse 33. We see that the Lamb of God was Jesus Christ. And the dove, which is symbol of the Holy Spirit, descended on Jesus. The lamb comes before the dove. The dove descends on the lamb. The fire comes on sacrifice. There can be no Pentecost without the cross. The foundation of Holy Spirit's relationship to you is the cross of Jesus Christ. Please make no mistake, your hunger, your holiness or your humility is not the foundation for why the Holy Spirit wants to have a relationship with you. That foundation is Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit has a desire toward you because of what Jesus did on the cross. In John chapter 7 verse 39 it says, But this He spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in Him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Spirit wasn't given because, why? Was it because they didn't fast? Was it because they didn't pray? Was it because the church wasn't united? Was it because there was no purity and holiness? No, because Jesus wasn't glorified. For me, this is the foundation scripture for my relationship with the Holy Spirit. Is to know that Holy Spirit wants to have relationship with me because Jesus is glorified in my life. The cross of Jesus is magnified. The grace of God is emphasized. As long as you emphasize works, as long as you focus on your hunger, as long as you focus on your desire, your humility or your desperation for God, you are building on a faulty foundation your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because His relationship with you is Jesus. The foundation of the relationship of the Holy Spirit with you is the cross of Jesus. I'm not talking about your relationship with Him. I'm talking about His relationship with you. The foundation of His relationship with you is the cross of Jesus. Spirit was not given because Christ wasn't glorified. You will not benefit and know the Holy Spirit closely as long as you're building that relationship on your good works, on your prayer life, on your Bible reading, on your hunger, humility and honor. It's built on the cross of Jesus Christ. Why you may say, why does Holy Spirit wait for us to honor Jesus and give Him a proper place before He relates with us and before He builds relationship with us? You must understand, unlike demons who live in dirty, dead, defiled places, the Holy Spirit lives in holy places. And only Jesus, His blood, turns your heart into a prime real estate for the Holy Spirit. 
Holy Spirit cannot dwell in tombs. He dwells in temples. The sin will make you into a tomb but the Holy Spirit, Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the sacrifice of Jesus turns your heart into a temple, into a house for the Holy Spirit. See when you got saved not only your name is written in the book of life, not only God gives you a new heart and a new spirit, not only God forgives your past sins, not only you have a place in heaven but at the moment of your salvation Holy Spirit has gotten a house. He has gotten a dwelling place and that address for His dwelling place is you. Who did that? Jesus. Who did that? His sacrifice, His death, His burial and His resurrection. If you don't honor Jesus' work on the cross, Holy Spirit has nothing to do with you or relationship with you. He will still be with you to bring you to Christ but He will not have a relationship with you as long as Christ is second to your good works, your good striving and your efforts. This changed my relationship with the Holy Spirit when I understood from the scriptures that Holy Spirit's relationship with me is Jesus. My relationship with Him is because of that hunger, that desire, because of how much He wants to be with me. But His relationship to me is Jesus Christ. All four Gospels record an account of the Holy Spirit descending as a dove upon Jesus Christ. You probably have heard and seen that the Holy Spirit, symbol for the Holy Spirit is the dove. The same way as the cross is the symbol of Christianity. The dove is the symbol of the Holy Spirit. Leonard Ravenhill said the following. He said there are nine main feathers on the left and on the right wings of the dove. There are nine gifts of the Holy Spirit and there's also nine fruit of the Holy Spirit. There's also five main tails on the dove which represent fivefold ministry given to the church. The tail feathers of the dove are like the rudder of the ship. They assist in balance and direction in flight. Just as the fivefold ministry gifts in the church bring balance to the body of Jesus Christ. So it's one of the symbols of why the Holy Spirit is represented as a dove. The first mention of the dove in the Bible is in the Noah's story. Noah's story is very illustrative and it's a huge symbol of Christian life for us. For example, as Noah was sheltered from the wrath of God by going to an ark, you and I are protected from the wrath of God by going into Christ. That ark of Noah is what Jesus is to us. Noah was a good person yet his goodness wasn't enough to save him from the wrath of God. The Bible says Noah was righteous even before God, meaning he was better than other people. But his righteousness wasn't enough to protect him from the wrath of God. He still needed to go into the ark. The same way with us, all of our goodness, all of our efforts, it's not good enough to appease a holy God. God gave us an ark. This ark has a name. His name is Jesus. When you enter it, you're protected from the wrath of God. The second similarity between the ark and Jesus is the ark had only one door. That's, that's who Jesus is. Remember how he said, I am the door. Jesus is not a door. He is the door to the Father. Yes, there are many ways to God, but there's only one way to heaven. There's many ways you can get to God. Some people go to God because of problems. Some people go to God because of success. But if you want to have a relationship with God, if you want to go to heaven, there is only one door and that door is Jesus Christ. Ark, not only it saved Noah from the wrath, not only had one door, but the ark also had one window. And that's symbolic of the Bible because a window in the house allowed the outside light to come in and it allows the insiders to see the outside world through a glass. The ark had one window. Not many but one. The same thing is with Christ. Christ has one word through which we see the spiritual world and through which 
God's illumination and light and information comes into our heart and that window I know you already know what that window is it's the Bible so not only the ark protected from the wrath of God not only the ark had one door and the ark had one window but the ark also had one family on the inside Noah's family everyone in the ark was family there was no cousins there was no neighbors they were all brothers and sisters so is in Christ when you go into Jesus you become brothers and sisters in Christ whether you're black you're white small or tall smart or not so smart whatever your financial situation is we are all a family because the blood of Jesus makes us into one but what I want to highlight in the ark is the ark had a dove Jesus is the baptizer of the Holy Spirit in the beginning of this lesson I've read how John the Baptist said of Jesus that he is the one he will that the testimony the, the sign that Jesus is the one is that the dove will descend on him and he will baptize in the Holy Spirit and fire the ark had a dove Jesus introduces us to the person and the work and the power of the Holy Spirit this dove flew out of the ark through the window the same way Holy Spirit speaks guides fills convicts but he does that in the parameters of God's Word Holy Spirit wrote the Bible so he will not lead speak or do something that violates his word he doesn't get out through the chimney or through the basement he gets through the window of God's Word this dove was released out of the ark three times the first time when the dove left the ark it found no resting place this speaks of the dispensation of the old covenant where the Holy Spirit couldn't rest in people he couldn't dwell in them because they were not clean they were not purified by the blood of Jesus Jesus was yet to die the second time ark the second time the dove was released from the ark we see that this dove brought a fresh olive branch back uh, olive leaf back to the ark and this speaks of the new covenant where the Holy Spirit introduces Jesus who died for us who brought the good news of the gospel by dying on the Calvary for our sin and then there's a third time the ark left the dove I'm sorry left the ark and this time when the dove left the ark dove never came back this speaks of the church age where the Holy Spirit was poured out and he's staying here all the way till the coming of Jesus Christ so what I want to remind you today is the Holy Spirit has his headquarters in Jesus Holy Spirit honors Jesus Holy Spirit mission is to glorify Christ if Jesus is not the center of your life you cannot have a relationship with the Holy Spirit he will not have a relationship with you because he can't be given to someone who doesn't glorify Christ his relationship with you is based on your relationship to Jesus Christ